The foundation was established in memory of Taiwo, Emmanuel Adebayo, my son, who passed on 20th of August, 2012. It was um, my favorite son. What really happened was in the year 2002, I lost my older sister in a car accident. I had been beaten by a black fly. I'll never forget my fear when the doctor told me I had river blindness and I may lose my sight. The Copy Foundation was founded really around this idea of me wanting to help others. You know, they say unto whom much is given, much is expected. And so I always felt like my servicing was beyond just music to the world, but also kind of trying to reduce that gap. And education in particular is important to me because I believe that, like you mentioned, it's the eradication of poverty really comes from education. In 2013, we had a baby that was born without a skull. The first child ever born in this world, no skull. They were living in Ibadan and the landlady evicted them and called the baby an evil child. So we brought them to Abuja here. We kept them for about two, three months. We were looking for a way out. So we wrote to hospitals in London, in the US, Dubai, Germany, France, and they all replied us that the baby's condition has never existed before. There is no precedent. It has never existed. Only one doctor in the US, Dr. Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson wrote to us that the uh, that her surgery has never been done before. He has retired from medical, but he's going to come back to the theater because of that child. And they're going to reconstruct a new skull for her, a surgery that has never been done for a fee of $234,000. And it took us 24 hours to raise that money. That government, individuals, good Nigerians, good hearted Nigerians, who raised the money within 24 hours. We threw the child to the U.S. We reconstructed a new skull for her. And when they opened the child, they found out that the brain wasn't growing normally like other kids because of so much fluid. So after the surgery, they put the girl on some kind of like pressure wheelchair because she can't walk very well. She had to be controlling with her hand. But that was in 2013. And she lived for six years before she passed on. It was a devastating one. When he passed, I, I I felt <laughs> if a young 26-year-old graduate who had a future in front of him was just snatched off like that, what is the purpose of us who are much older and we cannot impact life? In the process of the pain, I, I was asking God, what will I do with these ashes? How can I go on with these ashes? For about 40 days, I was still in that wilderness. And a flash came to me, and I saw that I needed to help those who are under substance abuse and addiction to save somebody, to remove tears from mother's eye, to give solace and to give life to a promising soul. Philanthropy if done right is about impact and there is no such thing as 100% impact. There's always going to be more people you want to help. There's always going to be bureaucracy failure. And I've gotten it wrong sometimes. I remember one of my first programs to Borno State. I went there with school books and I was so embarrassed because when I got to the center, these children, some of them couldn't even, they were on life support machines. They couldn't even breathe. They couldn't like function. So the last thing I can do is give them a book. So that's when I realized actually I'm not in the charity. I'm not in the business of giving. I'm in the business of changing. And so that's a challenge I often face where you, I, I get tempted to do quantity, but it's really quality. Through dedicated partnerships with strong indigenous organizations, we have made a difference in the lives of millions of Nigerians. We have only just begun to address the needs we see, and we want to inspire you 
to join us as we discover new ways to improve our nation and help our communities wherever we are, however we can.